Happy Sabbath, everyone. So good to see you this morning. Amen. And this, this or I would say it's sort of a, a, a service today that is so packed with so much meaning. Back then, they would call it a high Sabbath. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because today we get to partake of the Lord's Supper. Sister Jessica, good to see you. All right? All right. Thank you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, we truly love you. For all those who are, who are visiting um, with us today for the first time, let me see your hand. Just give me a shake. Uh, uh, there you go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, I saw Robert today. Uh, I haven't seen him for a little bit. And he got his lovely wife. But let's keep praying for Rob, okay? Brother Rob, good to see you. Welcome back. I know. Let's keep this brother. Hello, hello, there we go. All right, all right. Yeah, let's keep Brother Rob in our prayers and his family, his wife and family, but good to see you. Good to see you. All right. And so, welcome to all of our church members as well, those who are watching online. Um, so glad that you're able to join us this morning. Let's bow our heads in prayer and ask for the Lord's blessing upon us as we open his word. Our Heavenly Father, we're here this morning to offer our worship to you. The simplicity of it all is simply to, to just share with you that we love you, we really appreciate you, we honor you, we cherish you. Father, I know from the singing of, of your people that you received, and also, Father, from the faithful giving of your people, the praying that you heard. Uh, Father, this, just listening to the joy that comes from your, the little ones, such a blessing. And now, Father, we, we turn our attention to your word. And we just ask, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts. Father, I give you all that I am. I simply place, it, place my life into your hands and ask, Lord, that you would, you would speak through me and to me as well. May as we hear your words today, may we all be blessed by it. But also, Father, we ask that will be changed in the process as well. I pray, Father, that Jesus would be lifted up and that we'll see him in all of his glory and be even more motivated to serve him as we go from this place. So take full control. You know the needs of your people who are here. Ask, Father, 
that you in your own wisdom and strength will meet those needs. And may you be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Lord's Supper. Many times we, we would even use the word communion. But I believe sometimes we, we really can pass over, so to speak, the depth of what this table signifies. If we don't pay attention to the context, I believe, of this table, I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. The context is so critical. Are you with me? Luke chapter 22. I'm going to read, I'm going to start reading from verse 1. And I want you to notice with me, as we read it together, the amount of time. By the way, good to see you, my elder. <laughs> good to see you, yes, yes. Um, I want you to notice the amount of time Jesus makes reference to a particular word as we read it. And that, I believe, will help us to really appreciate the context for the Lord's Supper. Let's go. Luke chapter what? Now the feast of unleavened bread drew near, which is called one. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. And Sister Vivian on and on. We can read all the way through to verse 20. You will hear that word about maybe three or four more times. The Passover. The Passover. The context of the Lord's table is rooted in the Passover. And the Passover reminds us of what the children of Israel went through. Do you remember that scene? They were suffering in Egypt. They were in slavery in Egypt. In fact, they were in bondage. Do you know what bondage feel like? Anybody? Bondage is, I should say, when you're in a, a circumstance that you would love to get out of. Are you with me? You would love to break free from it. But someone is holding you captive. Are you with me? Or something is holding you captive. I mean, you can you can only imagine what life would look like and be like and feel like if you were just out of this bondage. But for now, you're stuck. And 
And life is unbearable. In fact, the Pharaoh turned up the fire, so to speak, when it comes to labor. And applied more labor on the people. I mean, they would want to live their lives the way they would want to live it. They would love to have children and know that no one will snatch them away and kill them. Are you with me? I mean, they wanted to grow up in a society where they are free to make their own choices and to live a life that has meaning. But now the only meaning of life to them at this point came from someone else. Are you with me? Bondage. Oh, wow. And in fact, life under this Egyptian slavery and bondage was only leading to one place. Death. Cruel death. Hmm. Passover signifies the day when God told them that I'm going to set you free. Anyone feel like they're in bondage today to something, but would love, would love that, 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 that freedom to be, to be cast upon them. Even right now, I mean, I mean, these people were longing for freedom. And here God comes and said, listen, there's only one person that can set you free. The doctor may try. Are you with me? But there's only one person who can, who can bring the healing that you really desire. That can somehow bring comfort to the pain you're feeling. In fact, there's only one person who can help you in the time when you're grieving. That can bring some meaning to life and, and give you some, some measure of hope for you to endure the days ahead. There's only one person, he's saying, that can mend the broken hearts. And bring you back together in harmony with your wife. Bring you back together in harmony with your husband. With your neighbor, with your colleague at work, there's only one person who can provide that freedom, that freedom that no one else can provide, the freedom of knowing that even if you should die here on planet Earth, there's an everlasting life that awaits all those who sleep in Jesus. There's only one person who can provide true freedom above sin. There's only one power that can make sin look weak, our non-existence. And that is the only power provided by Jesus. He can provide true freedom, you know. And he's showing us during the Passover how he can do it. He can set a whole generation of people free from the most powerful nation around them. And if he can do that, oh my, he can do something for me today. Hallelujah. He can do something for you as well. And so I want you now to turn. Let's go back to this book in Exodus. There's a particular uh, text there. In Exodus chapter 12, that is, that is so, so critical. What book did I say? And I want us to go to Exodus chapter 12. And um, I want to read two passages here. First, I want to read from verse 3. Exodus chapter 12. I'm going to read from verse 3. And then I'm going to read verse 26 and 27. I saw some things here. You know, sometimes you read the Bible, Sister Anne, and you, you think you really got the story. 
But sometimes you just missed a little bit there, and that's the story right there. All right, Exodus chapter 12, verse what? And Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you went out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by, by strength of the hand, out, sorry, for by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out of this place. Oh, that's 13, sorry. I'll give you a pass. One more page behind. You see, these are Bible students in a brother Raj. That's why I love the Seventh-day Adventist church. I, you know, each time I'm studying with a non-Seventh-day Adventist, I always tell them the only reason why that I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian is because it's the only people I've found on planet Earth that choose to live only by this and not what man says. You see, I'm reading a completely different scripture. Pastor, I love that. <laughs> the Bible. Are you with me? All right, so let's go to chapter 12. No, I said chapter 12. Excellent. Now, you are wrong now. <laughs> You're wrong now. I'm, I'm in chapter 12 of Exodus, and I'm reading from verse 3. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a what? According to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. So take a lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now, you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall do what? Shall kill it at? Shall kill it at twilight. All right? And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the? On the two doorposts and on the lintel, lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night. They were required not only to kill it. And you see, most time when we talk about the Passover, we talk about the what? The blood. Isn't that true? Yeah. And putting the blood on the doorposts, Correct. But they were also told to eat it. And let, let's finish the verse in verse 1. Ver, to eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall. The Lord is amazing. You know what the Lord is telling, teaching us through this? That he's not only, in, and you hear me say it all the time, but he's not only interested in forgiving you and me, really. The blood, as we're going to read, it's for our what? The remission of? But sin doesn't just need to be what? Forgiven. Sin needs to be removed. Come on, y'all. It needs to be removed. So in eating the flesh... All right, God was saying, I want you to eat it because after you leave this place, you're going to need to have some kind of nourishment in your body because you'll be walking for a while. Come on, y'all. You're going to need some protein. <laughs> Are you with me? You're going to need some fat. Come on. You're going to need something to sustain you for a little bit. You make sure you sit there and eat it all up. <laughs> he was feeding them. Come on, y'all. You know why? Because when a, let's say a person gets baptized, that's not the end of life. 
In fact, that's the beginning of their spiritual walk, right? Their spiritual life. And so guess what? They need sustenance after baptism. Come on, y'all. They need help. And so that's why they're going to have to be connected to Christ. That's the only way. There's something that's called sanctification. That's also a gift. Just like forgiveness. We need that sanctifying power that can help us to get over that alcohol. Come on, y'all. You try it and you try it and you try it. But guess what? No matter how hard you try, you're stuck. All right? You need help. All those sexual addictions, you need help to overcome them. Come on, y'all. This is about making us all holy, holy like Christ. All that anger that we lived with. Are, are you with me? Christ doesn't want us to live with that until he comes. He wants us to address it. Come on, y'all. You see, he not only forgives us, he wants to clean us up. But he's the only one that can do it. And he can. By the way, I j oh, forgive me. I got to pause. I just saw Sister Lorena. Sister Lorena, I'm sorry, I just saw you. Just know that this church is in prayer, prayer on your behalf, Amen. your son and your family, all right? By the way, the funeral service for her husband, Richard, will be on August 2nd. It's a Friday. August what? And it's going to be at the Williams Funeral Home. We have, we've been there several times since I've been here. Is that all right? The witch funeral home? Yeah. All right. Let's, let's go. Let's come out. Let's support uh, Sister Haney. All right? All right. Yeah, and so let's go back. So when we think of the uh, salvation, we got to keep in mind it's not just forgiveness, but it's also all about freeing us from sin. So when we come around this table, uh, don't just think being forgiven. Don't just even ask for forgiveness. Are you with me? Ask for power to live a life like Christ. Ask him to change you into his likeness and to help you overcome the things that you're struggling with right now. Ask him. If he's powerful enough to forgive you, he's powerful enough to free you. Come on. Amen. That's a God we serve. And so, and so, and so when, we, when we think of the Passover, uh, we're able now to bridge. By the way, they were freed from what? What are some of the things they were freed from? They were freed from bondage. Isn't that true? They're also freed from death, right? They're also freed from slavery. What else? Sickness, idolatry. I mean, you think about it. They were freed miraculously by God. The Lord's Supper is all about Freedom, deliverance from spiritual Israel. Egypt, sorry. Are you with me? When we come to the Lord's Supper, we want freedom from it all. And we are able to derive freedom when we look at the cross. And we reflect, we remember of all the things that Christ set us free from on that day. On that day, he set us all free from the bondage of sin. Come on, y'all. And the bondage of sin is far more powerful than the bondage of Pharaoh. Are you with me? He set us free. He gave everyone the opportunity 
to live a life freed from the bondage of sin and death and hell. Hallelujah. When we look at the cross. Um, I, 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 I want us to turn with, just turn us a couple more texts here. First Corinthians, First Corinthians um, chapter 5, Paul made a statement. He made a statement here. First uh, Corinthians chapter 5. Look at what Paul said. I just love Ella Wilton. I want us to really take a look at this verse together. All right? Look at it. Chapter what? Verse. Verse what? Seven. Therefore, purge out the what? The whole lump. Right? No, no. Therefore, purge out the whole leaven, that you may be a new, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ, come on, y'all. For indeed, Christ is our what? Passover. Do you see what Paul is doing? Paul is now linking Christ to the Lamb. Of the Passover feast, right? So he's saying Christ is our Passover. Because remember, you know, why is it called the Passover back then? Why? Because the angel, the death angel, the angel of judgment was on its way. And it would pass over your house. It would pass over my house if it saw a what? If it saw the blood on the doorposts, are you with me? It would just pass over. So everyone within, within the house would be what? All the first, the firstborn, right? Would be, would be safe, right? So, so, so the Passover uh, angel, Paul is saying, listen, Christ is our Passover. Are you with me? When you see him on the cross, he was making sure that any person who chose, even to the even right now, to say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept your blood, the shedding of your blood, all right, as a remission for all my sins, past, present, and future. Are you with me? Any person who by faith reach out to Christ and say, I believe, I believe, forgive me of all my sins. Are you with me? That's like the angel of death passing over. Now, the angel of death, you know, when it strikes, it strikes forever. Come on, y'all. That's why this is so crucial. That's why the gospel of Jesus is so important to every human being. That's why I want to thank my sister for that song. We should go and share it, right? Yasmin, thank you so much. Because guess what? The angel of death, in this case sin, has only one goal. And that is to put us down without Christ and that will last forever. Jesus could not stand that for his children and he would rather say I am going to be their Passover. I am going to protect them from what? All the consequences of sin which means the everlasting punishment. I am going to assume that upon myself so that they will never ever face the second death. 
Listen, they might face the first death. All right? But I'm going to make sure that anyone who believes in me will never face the second one. That that is the forever death. And anyone who believes in me will have eternal life. Hallelujah. Every time we come to this table, it should be a time of celebration for all who have expressed their faith in Jesus Christ. It's a big celebration because we are not just living for life here upon planet Earth. Many who choose not to believe in Christ, this is the only life they're choosing today. And guess what? It can be snuffed out in an instant. And all the wealth that they have put together, all the big bank account, all the food that they have stored, are you with me? All the fancy cars and all of this they had, they can't even use because they're dead. It can be gone in an instant. But if it should ever be taken from a person who gave their heart to Jesus, guess what? One day, they'll be walking on streets of gold. Hallelujah. Can you, can you imagine? Gold, right? I mean, one day, they'll be living in a world without the existence and presence of sin. Forever. One day they'll be able to have a mansion in glory. And I tell you, that mansion cannot be compared to no mansion here. You know what I like about that statement you read, Elder? Elder, it's when, he, it's when he's gone to prepare a mansion. The text said, for me. Come on, y'all. He's gone to prepare a mansion for us. He knows what we like. Come on, y'all. He knows it. He knows everything about us. So he's going to prepare a mansion just for me. Who? Don't miss out on that, folk. It simply means Jesus on the cross was preparing, making provisions for every person who would choose to accept him as Lord and Savior. What a beautiful provision. I'll close by reading. Just reading a few texts here in Matthew. Matthew 26. I'm going to read Matthew 26. And we'll just close with that. 28 and 29. Matthew 26. 28 and 29. <coughs> Matthew chapter 26, verse what? 29. Jesus, with the Passover as his context, instituting this new um, feast, made the statement in verse 28, for this is my blood of the new what? The New Testament or New Covenant. Which is shed for many for the remission of. So he has the, the fruit of the vine. And he's saying, this is symbolic of my what? My blood. Of the New Covenant. In other words, there's no need to keep the Passover feast anymore. Because guess what? The real lamb of God is about to die for your Passover. Are you with me? So there's no need to. That's why we as Seventh-day Adventist Christians, we don't keep the Passover feast. But you know what? I have friends who do. Are you with me? So if they want to keep it, they can. No problem with that. Colossians 2 told us, right? However, we're not bound to keep it. Are you with me? We're not bound to keep it. But he's saying, listen, this is my blood of the new covenant. This one I want you to remember to keep. Which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. 
But I say to you, I will not drink it of this. I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in what? You know, it made me wonder, you know. Okay. So when he came back to life, Ella Stewart, he was on, he was walking around with them for how long? For 40 days, right? So I guess they didn't experience another communion setting with him while he was on, on planet Earth. Are you with me? And the reason is, he's saying, I want you to remember it. All right? Because when you do this each time, as a remembrance of me, I want you to fix your mind on the day when I'm going to drink this with you personally. <laughs> the day is coming, he's trying to say, when I am going to set it all up and we're going to be able to sup together. In glory. Hallelujah. In glory. And so, you know, that's why this uh, partaking of the Lord's Supper is it's only for believers. It's only for those who, who actually made that step to say, Lord, even though the world thinks of Jesus as rubbish, as his, his, his teachings as just fanatical, and, and, and people who follow him are just lunatics. In fact, Paul used the word uh, that the people used to use against Christians as morons. That's how the world think about us. But you know what? I am going to choose to forsake the world and to follow him and to be baptized. Hallelujah. I'm going to go all the way and marry Jesus. And I don't care what the world is going to say because I have my eyes set upon that day in glory when I meet with my Savior. Whew. And if you're here today, and you have not given your heart to Jesus. You have not yet been baptized. Jesus is saying, I would love for you to join with the family and be a part of the Lord's Supper. Hallelujah. I would love to commune with you one day. And if you're here today and like to give your heart to Jesus, you can do it right now. How? 1 John 1, and verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's what? Faithful and just to forgive us of how many? All, All of them. You can have your sins forgiven now. And not only forgive you, remember I say it's not only just about forgiveness, it's also about what? sanctification, making you holy. So he's willing to cleanse you from all unrighteousness as well. He's willing to make you a person who can live a life of freedom from sin. Do you believe? Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for this time. So grateful for the people here today. Father, these are people, along with the preacher, who truly loves you. You are everything to us. Without you, we're nothing. Today, we simply want to say, Father, that you would just bless us with your forgiveness. Father, there are things that we have done that surely have dishonored your name and surely has brought so much problems and disgrace to our walk on this planet. And so today we just ask that as we reach out in faith to you, that you would wash us, that you will cleanse us, 
and that the blood of Jesus Christ would be applied to our hearts. We receive Jesus, your indescribable gift. And we ask, Lord, that you grant us all the might and power of your Holy Spirit to walk with us each and every day and to help us to, to, to move from the things that we know brings complete displeasure to you. You know our weakness. You know how frail we are. Without your power, we can't do it. But with you, Father, we can do all things. And so we ask you to come in and sup with us. Father, I pray that the changes that needs to be made, needs to be made, made that you will, you will just walk with us starting from today. There's some tough decisions that we, we will have to make. Uh, help us not to, to put them off for some time down in the future, but to address them right now with your help. I pray, Jesus, that you will set us all free today. Show us how, how devastating sin can be. And at the same time, may we see the cross and Jesus high and lifted up, paying the penalty for us and providing the Holy Spirit for us. Bless us now as we move forward throughout this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.